I'm Dave. And I'm Andrew. And we are the IB English Guys. We are almost finished with our <laughs> countdown to paper. <laughs> we have a new text type today, Mr. Jaws. We are looking at a public service announcement, also known as a PSA. What can you tell us about public service announcements, Mr. Jones? Yeah, I think public service announcements come from organizations, non-governmental organizations, sometimes from the government itself. They're aimed at raising awareness, raising awareness about a, a very important social issue to shape our thinking. Yeah, they're trying to improve the world. <laughs> yeah, put out a message and make some social changes, Giles. That is it. Now, folks, if you've been watching our videos for a while, you'll know that we have an acronym that we like to use. Uh, it's a mnemonic, I'm sorry, that we use. It's called, it's about spring rolls, Mr. Giles. <laughs> it is. Uh, would you like to remind our viewers of this mnemonic? Sure. Please call Aunt Vera to eat Vietnamese spring rolls. Please call Aunt Vera to eat Vietnamese spring rolls. Are we going vegetarian or Vietnamese on I, these? I like Vietnamese, okay. but you can be vegetarian if you want. I think it's uh, a vegetarian. I love Vietnamese spring rolls, right. so maybe that's my own But more bias. importantly, Mr. Taz, what does the P stand for in yeah. this case? The P for the public service announcements stands for producer. And what we mean by that is who is making this public service announcement? What organization is it? What do they stand for? And what do they want? Yeah, of course, the C stands for culture and context, Mr. Giles. You want to think about, you know, what is the historical context of this PSA? What's happening with respect to society, politics, the economy? What's going on in this world, and how does this influence the message that's being conveyed? You want to think about the context and the culture. Right. The A for ant is audience. Again, who are they targeting? What, again, we want to think about what is their age, ethnicity, and, and what are they trying to get, them, get across to them, and how the words, images... Um, connect to that audience. Yeah, the V of course stands for values. And a PSA will have some really deep value messages embedded in it, Mr. Giles. They might be appealing to health. They might be appealing to family. They might be appealing to just being loved, social security, acceptance, and the list goes on and on. What is that value message that the PSA is appealing to? Yeah, that's great. And the T is for text. We wanna look at the language. We wanna look at the written text. Um, we wanna think about connotations of words and denotations of words. This again is going to, a good PSA is going to have language to instruct. Yeah, and you want to think about the E, uh, emotions and mood, Mr. Giles. You know, what emotions are being evoked from the text? You know, how are they pulling at heartstrings? Uh, are there certain images or symbols that really uh, make you feel angry, happy, sad? Think about those those emotions that you're feeling as you look yeah, at the PSA. That's good. Visuals and layout, of course, we're thinking about image and how things are are evoking different ideas, thinking about color, all the different aspects of image that we've talked about in previous videos. We're going to bring a lot to the yeah, table. And of course, lastly, the spring rolls, Mr. Joss. Take the spring rolls. You like subtext. Yeah, I love subtext. That's kind of reading between the lines. You know, we're thinking about what is implied through this particular PSA and how, how again, does that, does that connect? There's that word implications again, right? Yeah. Subtext, what's implied? That's right. All right. So we are looking at a PSA from Mom's Demand Action. Uh, I'm not exactly sure the publication date of this, Giles, but uh, we do have the guiding question. Would you like to talk about the guiding question? Yeah, this was actually made in 2017. Well, that's good because we need that for the context. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, no, it's, it's important. And I think, um, what was your question? Oh, the guiding question. How does this PSA use language and visual elements to convey a value message? Come on, throw it at me. <laughs> okay, yeah, what are the key words there, Mr. Mr. Cohen? Mr. Giles, the key words <laughs> I notice are language, visual elements, so I need to pay attention to text and what's happening visually on the page. And I want to think about value messages. What are the values that are implied or inherent in this PSA? That's what I'm thinking about. Language, visuals, and values. Yeah, so we'll try to keep those things in mind while we talk about this PSA. Maybe you've seen this before. This has, again, gotten a lot of awards. It has gotten a lot of press, and I think there's a lot to talk about. So we're going to talk about both the big ideas, and we're also going to look at some of the features that we well, notice. Do you want to stay with our acronym and start with the P? Who's produced this, Mr. Giles? Yeah, well, Moms Demand Action. I'm noticing their logo in the bottom right-hand corner. Again, Moms Demand Action is a really interesting name for their organization. We're thinking about moms. What are moms? Why moms? Mr. Giles, moms, I think we can infer that they are really committed to protecting their children. Uh, specifically, you know, I I'm seeing school shooting. I'm seeing a child on here with a large assault rifle. This is about school shootings, and this is something that moms are deeply concerned because just like fathers, moms want their children to be safe at school. Yeah, and the action that they're demanding is really what's at the heart of this campaign and this, this public service announcement is they want legislation to 
you know, have gun control because they want to get guns, you know, out of out of people's hands. I can't and, help. Yeah. Yeah. To reduce the, the, the senseless violence that we're seeing and that's uh, rampant in, in the U.S. and in many other countries, too. Indeed, Jaws. And their logo even implies that sense of urgency. It looks to be sort of a takeoff of an exclamation mark, which just really conveys a sense of urgency and the sense of importance. This is an urgent issue that requires our attention now. Yeah. So if we're sticking with our acronym, the C for context and culture is 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 fairly clear. We see the American flag in this image. We know that this is an American organization and unfortunately this is a predominantly American problem with the rampant um, you know gun use in the United States and the gun violence and the number the countless school shootings that have occurred um, yeah, you know, and, I just think it's uh, it's a clear context. Yeah, and again, looking at the context, the setting of this particular ad, obviously we see we're in a schoolhouse, we're in an elementary school. Uh, this is a very, very typical looking elementary school, Jaws. We'll save some of this for the visual analysis as we yeah. get a bit deeper into it. So we're thinking about A for audience, and again, the A for audience is, again, the, the we're thinking about the American people. We're thinking about, they, they, they're trying to, I think, uh, really access a wide, a wide audience, and they're really thinking about voters and people that are maybe could influence their legislators who are making laws sure obviously the United States is a very vast multicultural nation we see you know a white girl we see a black girl here it's a place of great diversity so we want to capture that uh, mom demands action they want to capture that in their imaging as well they do and they I, I think they want to show that this this is this is uh, a, a, this is a, a global issue that affects everybody regardless of, of race and gender and I think that's really uh, important in their in their branding yeah. Uh, now we're in the V for Veer. Let's get into those what are the values or visuals at the this point. The value message. Let's talk about – let's do the visual first, Giles. There's a lot to talk about. Then we'll get the values later. Can we yeah. do that? Yeah. Okay, good. So the, the, the image is so impactful. The first thing that we're struck by when we look at the image, I think, is obviously these two young girls that are sitting cross-legged, and they're juxtaposed because one is holding the little red riding hood, and the other is – holding this giant assault weapon. This is a very ironic photo. This is the opposite of what we would expect. So it's almost visual irony. Yeah, it's a really unnatural image, Mr. Giles. And I can't help but notice the gaze of both of these young girls. They're almost like breaking the fourth wall. If we were, it was drama, they're staring right at me. And I'm staring, it's making me stare back at them in horror. And they're challenging us. Those girls are challenging us. And they're almost telling us, look, you know, look at, look at what, what we're holding. And this is, again, they're, 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 again, they're demanding some action, um, yeah. and I, I think that's powerful. Well, in the background, Mr. Giles, there again is that symbol of the flag, and it doesn't look very healthy. It's sort of, you know, it's sort of, a, it looks a bit disheveled. It's not really, you know, it's not really out in the breeze. It doesn't look very healthy, and then we see that empty rocking chair as well. Typically, you'd see a, a you know, you imagine a teacher sitting there reading a book, but in this case, it's empty. The whole school is empty. Yeah, and that's and kind that's of symbolic, that, right? Yeah, it is symbolic. Maybe it's because of that giant assault rifle that's in the library. Yeah, I don't there's be in there. there's no adult supervision. Um, we also see that the color hues of this image are a little bit yellowish and a little bit, it's, it almost has a, it's an interesting It's almost dirty effect. looking. Yeah, it just has this sort of, a little bit of a somber, serious effect to the color tones. I think that's important. So again, image, a lot to talk about. Of course, the library setting is the, is the last thing we could think about. And Sorry, last comment. We noticed that we see the half of the word fiction there in the background. Sadly, this isn't fiction. This is nonfiction. So that might be something I'd talk All about. All right, so we went to town on the visuals. Now let's talk about the text because the text is very important. The text is essential because we see in the headline, one child is holding something that's banned in America to protect him to protect them, and then in red it says, guess which one? John, what do we notice about well, that? You gotta talk about the red font, guess which one? That's an alarming color. I think they're demanding us, they're, they're interacting with us, and we have to interact with them. We have to guess which child has been banned. Right? Yeah, well, and again, the, the, which, yeah, which item? And again, this is the irony, because of course we would, we would assume it would be this giant weapon. This is the whole premise of the entire PSA, is to show us the absurdity of of you know uh, banning uh, a children's book at the same time that we're allowing a well, a giant Mr. Weapon. Giles, children's book 
had a wine bottle. <laughs> right. So can we talk about the wine bottle and how, how awful that is and why that's so interesting? <laughs> right. Sad. This, this idea that somehow exposing a kid to an uh, image of a wine bottle is to, com to promote something unhealthy where, it, when in reality the real, the real threat is the, the, this giant weapon that's there. Well, yeah, and I think that makes an illusion of book banning. We see book banning being considered, again, quite prominently in the United States. They're saying we're keeping Little Red Riding Hood out of the library because it has references to alcohol, but we'll let this assault rifle in. Yeah, that's our, right. That, that's really, really ironic and really upsetting. At the okay, then time. just just to wrap up the language, we also see in the bottom, we see in white, it's it says, we keep Little Red Riding Hood out of schools because of a wine bottle in our basket. Why not assault weapons? This again, this rhetorical question, why not assault weapons? This is challenging us, challenging us and showing us verbally the absurdity and explaining a little bit of the image, yeah, right? I'm glad you, you said that the word part. absurdity because it is absurd. The image is absurd. The slogan, the text is absurd. The whole issue is absurd, and that's what moms wow, demand Wow, so that action. sounds like a thesis. That's good. Yeah, I like that. Maybe we should stop it out of that one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Then we also like we we want to talk about the emotions that are evoked. That's the E. That's the Eat Vietnamese Spring Rolls. The emotions are. What are the emotions of this PSA? Uh, Mr. Giles, I, I feel like these two girls. When I look at their faces, they're quite stern. They're stoic. They're steadfast. They're deeply concerned by this issue. So that makes me feel worried. Yeah, it's almost like it evokes outrage, right? It I'm does. outraged. I'm outraged. You know, I don't know. Like it, it evokes an, a, a Worry, response. Outrage. It evokes something. Yeah, concern. Sure. Yeah, and and safety. We're thinking about safety. So that's the value message to me. The value message is about child safety and the safety of young of young people. Giles, subtext is kind of hard. What are what are the implications here of the of this PSA? What can we say? The implications are that somehow legislatures and laws are not protecting kids and that there are there are inconsistencies in our policies and that we're really putting emphasis in the wrong places. Indeed. That's what they're saying. They're saying we're more focused on banning books than we are banning assault rifles. You know, a, a book that references a bottle of wine versus someone toting a weapon, and those are not equal elements of danger, Giles, and I think they're mocking the absurdity in this issue. Yeah, so what we did with that long, you know, our discussion is really we applied our acronym. We had Aunt Vera went to town she and we to town. we talked about image, we talked about language, we talked about the, the visual elements and we really connected to the value message. So folks, again, just reminding of the guiding question, how does the PSA use language and visual elements to convey a value message? Try to write a thesis statement, make yourself a rudimentary outline, take a stab at the answer. Come on back in two days, you can compare your work to ours, and hopefully you did well, because that's text type number eight of the countdown. Remember, the outline is key. All right, All right guys. See you next time.